This video covers part one of processing data collected with the MicaSense Red Edge. It assumes that you've already completed your flight, uh, that you got your overlap correct, and you collected pictures of your calibration panel to begin. Um, we're going to start by opening up PIX40 Mapper. While it's doing that, we're going to come up with a new project. And for that name, I'm just going to call it the folder name for where my pictures are located, just to keep everything consistent. In that case, it's June 10th, 2019, Site 1. So go ahead and give your project a name. You can choose a location for processing the model, where your output's going to be stored. My recommendation is to do this on the local PC. Uh, it'll just be faster than trying to save it to an external hard drive. Let's go ahead and click Next. Oops, this project already exists. Let me call it 1A. Go ahead and click Next. And now we're going to add our images. And I'm going to navigate back to that folder where I've stored my Red Edge images. And while I'm here, what you'll notice is that every time a folder uh, gets so much data in it, um, per flight, Red Edge will create a new subfolder. Um, so if we go to properties, you can see that about every 1.28 gigs, you're going to get a new subfolder with your pictures in it. So for this particular flight, um, it was about 12 minutes long. We've got about three different folders. So we need to make sure we add all three folders to our data set. And notice I've got a fourth folder here called Calibration. I've gone ahead already and pulled out the pictures from the data set that weren't helpful to the model. Um, for instance, when you start up the Red Edge, you're using the Red Edge app um, to start your recording and you're sitting on the ground for a long time. So you can throw out all of those pictures. And then at the beginning of your flight, you're also taking pictures of your calibration target. Um, that's going to be in folder triple zero. Again, I've already pulled those out and put them into a new folder called calibration. So we're going to come back to this in a little bit. For now, we'll just add triple zero. So I'm going to click the first image, hit Control A to select all, and click Open. And once again, we're going to go to Add Images, go to the next folder, 001, Control A, Open. And once more, Add Images, 002, Control A, and Open. So I've got about 1,820 images selected. It's a pretty big project. Um, probably going to end up needing 5 gigs of storage. So do make sure you've got uh, plenty of storage before you start your project. So once you click Next, it's going to start reading the metadata of those pictures and it's going to get your lat long and elevation and it'll start um, recognizing what camera you're using if it's part of the Pix4D database. Uh, the MicaSense Red Edge is part of that database. Um, there's nothing to do here except note the image properties for the coordinate system. It is WGS1984. We're going to leave that as the default. Um, for the geolocation accuracy, it's going to be standard, which is, in our case, 5 meters in the horizontal and 10 in the vertical. Um, if you had some kind of uh, RTK or PPK on your system, you could change those settings here, maybe change it to 5 centimeters. Uh, in this case, we're just using the GPS that comes with the Red Edge, so we're going to leave that as the default. And the last thing to do on this screen is just note the order of your bands. So the Red Edge has five different sensors. You're going to get five bands. and the order is going to be important so just note the order so band 1 is blue, band 2 is green band 3 is red, band 4 is near infrared and then band 5 is red edge that's gonna come back later go ahead and hit next 
and this is where you can specify your output coordinate system. We want to use state plane, so we're going to change unit from meters to feet, and then it's going to try to auto detect the correct output coordinate system. This flight was done in South Central Texas, so we're going to need to change that by going to known coordinate system and clicking advanced coordinate system. That's going to allow you to choose a coordinate system from a list, so click that. The datum is going to be North American datum 1983, but we do need to find Texas. So we're going to scroll down until we get to NAD 1983 State Plain Texas South Central 4204 feet. Find that and click OK. The vertical coordinate system you can leave as the default, which is EGM 96 geoid. Click Next. Next you're presented with standard templates for processing data. These, these are um, usually out of the box solutions to if you're doing 3D mapping. Uh, we're doing agricultural multispectral and if you scroll down you can see some of the products it provides so some of the generated outputs are reflectance maps uh, your normalized difference vegetation index we do have red edge which is useful for classifying different types of red uh, uh, vegetation so you can also get a normalized difference red edge index um, the only thing important about that screen is select your AG multispectral and then uncheck start processing now otherwise it's going to process everything from start to finish and you're not going to have um, an opportunity to um, change your settings so that's what we're going to do now is just specify some of the different generated output and um, we're also going to calibrate our data so first thing is just to uncheck the point cloud and mesh and the DSM ortho mosaic and in index. What that does is it will allow you to process the model all the way up through initial processing, which we're going to do intentionally because after the initial point cloud model is created, we're going to go back and add our ground control points later on. But we want to do that before we start doing the dense point cloud the DSM, the DTM. Um, so just make sure those are unchecked. Then go to processing options in the lower left hand corner. Click on initial processing. For the key points, we're going to leave that as full. That means we're going to have the highest resolution possible for this data set. And for the quality report, you can leave this checked. It's just going to allow you to preview the ortho mosaic and the quality report. Next, go to point cloud and mesh. Under point cloud, you're presented with the image scale, which you can um, change that back to one if you want a really high resolution point cloud model. For the red edge, uh, we're going to leave it as the default and use half scale. Under point cloud classification, we are going to classify point clouds. Uh, that's going to allow you to discriminate between a building or a road surface or trees or other vegetation. Uh, next under 3D textured mesh we really do not need uh, 3D textured mesh it's just a lot of extra memory it's consuming um, sometimes it's useful for volumetrics but we're just gonna make sure that that's unchecked. Then going down to the DSM ortho mosaic and index uh, the main screen we need to focus on is the index calculator. This is where you're going to enter all of your reflectance factors for your calibration reflectance panel which would have come with the purchase of the MicaSense Red Edge. Now when you buy that you're not going to know the reflectance factors up front. You have to request that information from the manufacturer. I um, emailed uh, Kelly DeForest at MicaSense. You provide the serial number on your calibration panel we need the average reflectance factor and again you'll want to note the band order which ranges from uh, blue 1, green 2, red 3, red edge 4, near infrared 5. So just be careful because if you look down here 
Um, the red edge image order is a little bit different. Down here we've got near infrared as band four and red edge is band five, whereas here it's reversed. Um, so we need to just kind of copy and paste these average bandwidth values uh, from the manufacturer, starting with blue, which is band one. And again, you want to double check that that is band one. So go back to Pix4D, and under the blue band, click Calibrate, and then we're going to browse to that calibration folder, which contains the images of the calibration target. And you just want to pick the best example of the calibration target. Ideally, the panel would take up the full um, size of the picture, and it would be as head-on as possible. Um, in my case, it was solar noon. The sun was directly overhead, so I was kind of standing back from the panel. That's okay. So double-click your first image, which is uh, going to be band one, and you want to go to the upper left-hand corner of the calibration panel uh, target and left click then go to the bottom left left click go to the bottom right and left click the uh, top right left click and then to close the loop you want to go back to the top left and right click and then this is where you're going to enter that reflectance factor which was uh, 0.64 so click OK and repeat for everything uh, down the list and being careful again with near infrared and uh, red edge it's very easy to get those mixed up so Okay, after you've filled in all of your calibration reflectance factors, um, you can again change the resolution down here of your uh, index. Um, we're going to leave that as one ground sample distance, which is the, the best resolution. And you can go to the DSM and ortho mosaic tab. And also, again, we're going to leave the resolution as the default. Uh, for the digital surface model, we're going to use noise filtering and uh, surface smoothing. Um, these are just different interpolation methods, as well as the uh, raster digital surface model. Um, the, uh, I the interpolation method we're going to use is inverse distance weighting. So we're going to check GeoTIFF, and then I also like to check merge tiles. It'll be a little bit faster. Um, Orthomosaic, same thing, just check GeoTIFF and merge tiles. An additional input, if you wanted to have a, um, a DSM grid, you could get a LAS file. We don't need that, but we are going to check the uh, raster digital terrain model. And for the resolution, the best resolution for this is going to be 5GSD. You can also specify uh, contour lines as part of your generated output. So you would probably want a shape file, so you would click shape file, and then you could specify your major and minor intervals here. Uh, we don't need contours for this project, so we're going to leave that blank. And once you've done all of those steps, you can click OK, and we will start processing the model.